Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. It's Claude here. It's our weekly MIT Africa, True Africa University, MIT Center for International Studies webinar. And today it is my great, great, great honor to introduce you to Nicola Kazadi, who is the Minister of Finance in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The um, uh, minister is, is uh, back to back today, so he won't have too much time. So without further ado, I will have him uh, share with us his presentation around the growth model that he is building with the government in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And after his presentation, hopefully we'll have a few minutes for question and answer. So thank you all for coming in. And the floor is yours, His Excellency, Mr. Nicola Kazadi. Okay, thank you very much, Claude. Uh, good morning, everybody. Yes, it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you today. I will make a very short mention. Uh, uh, it used to be the, 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 the third one when the Sudan was still one country. But now, and also, the most uh, important in terms of uh, number of uh, people after Egypt, Nigeria, Egypt, and Egypt. Uh, we are uh, representing 10% uh, of the world forest, and we are this, the, the second uh, largest carbon um, sink uh, of the world after, uh, can, no, even say the first one, the first one uh, before, uh, on sequestration, we are the first one, uh, because uh, we are doing uh, six times better than uh, Amazonia in Brazil. Uh, and uh, our, for example, we have some pit lines that can uh, uh, um, uh, store 30 billion of ton of uh, carbon, uh, which is uh, huge. And uh, we are also uh, a country which uh, represents, we have, a, like in Africa, we. The country has itself over 30, uh, 53%, 51 to 53% of fresh water for the whole continent. It means that it's a particular country, and uh, but unfortunately, uh, still very uh, poor, unless it is, uh, it is uh, um, endowed with uh, a lot of uh, minerals, riches. Uh, the country has this particularity. During the old time, uh, it was uh, targeted by the colonialists because of uh, its forests, but not only forests, also it was uh, providing rubber to the world. And uh, at that time, we were the first producer of rubber. And uh, this is one of the reasons why the colonialists came to take the country, to control the country. Uh, this was done against all the standards in terms of human, uh, human rights. And after the rubber, it was the copper, which come, uh, came after. Copper, not only copper, copper and, and also like uranium. The, 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 you know, the atomic bomb in 40, nine, 1944, I think, was uh, made by uranium uh, coming from the earth. And now, for this day, to, to cut it a bit short, uh, we are again at the front line with our minerals, because we are the first reserve of cobalt and the first exporter of cobalt, 71% of the world supply in cobalt. We are also the first reserve and exporter in coltan, even though this coltan is produced in a very uh, uh, black uh, uh, context uh, linked to the world at the eastern part of the country. We are trying to make it more transparent now. And uh, we are also with a lot of other critical minerals like lithium and others, uh, nickel and etc. So it means that now we not only in terms of climate challenges for the world, we are not only represent, representing uh, um, uh, a huge asset for the world in forests, but also on minerals that are needed for the decarbonization of the world, of the economy of the world. And uh, this gives us an important role to play 
uh, on this uh, aspect. And we have been we have been going through a lot of turmoil. Um, not only before the independence, you can read all the, the books. I will I, I, I will suggest you some books that you can read uh, at the end, but we have gone through a lot of turmoil. And uh, the last one is in 1994, uh, there was a genocide in Rwanda. And because of that genocide, uh, people uh, came, uh, people flew from Rwanda to DRC, to the Eastern part of Congo. And uh, since then, this part of the country is under insecurity, chronic insecurity linked to, to that. And also, in addition to uh, the humanitarian aspect of the, of the, the, the situation, uh, Rwanda has managed to exploit our mine in that region, essentially gold and coltan, and to ensure that exploitation, they have been uh, uh, fueling conflict with a lot of uh, armed groups. So now the, this part of the country, which is the, the far east of the country, is known to be uh, 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 affected by a con I'm going to say it, con chronic uh, uh, conflict. And uh, unfortunately, this gives us a very bad uh, uh, communication uh, about the country, while we have so many other things to, to bring to the world. And we are now since the, the new president came to office in, in 2019, we have managed to fix those issues uh, on security, on economy, on the wrong management of the economy, mismanagement of the economy, governance. And this is, uh, as a result, I can say that as a result from 2019 to now, uh, we have been, uh, let's say, let's, let's count from 2020 because it was affected by COVID. From 2020 to now, uh, thanks to the new leadership of the country, thanks to the new management of the country, we've been able to change completely the situation of the country on human, on human rights. Uh, the figures speak, speak from, uh, by themselves. You can see some report from the UN and others, you will, other third party, you will see exactly the change that we brought in that area on human rights, on economy we have been able to bring a more transparent uh, um, supply chain on our minerals. And now we are, uh, as we are rated by uh, EITI, I don't know if you know EITI, uh, the Initiative for Transparency in Extractive Industry, we have been, uh, we have been uh, ranked, uh, you know, assessed by them, that we are almost four out of, out of five means that we are close to comply with all the standards of the, the EITR uh, uh, related to transparency in the mining sector. So we, are, we, have, we have made tremendous progress in the last uh, years. And, and on the, the budget side, we have been able to double, uh, no, triple the tax collection in the country from 2020 to now. In only two years, we have tripled the tax collection. Uh, the tax collection ratio to GDP was 8% in 2020, and now it is uh, close to 16%. Um, very few countries have made such, such a, a progress. On economic growth, we are resilient than any country in the world. During COVID time, we had a positive uh, economic growth of 1.7. There, there were only two countries in the continent with a positive growth. In uh, 2000, uh, uh, next year, we've raised to 61%. And last year, we closed at 8.5%, making DRC the, the most uh, fast-growing economy in the continent. Uh, it means that we are far above uh, the average in Africa and in the world in terms of economic growth, and uh, especially uh, in Africa, we did, we, we did three times the average for the continent. The problem that we are still facing are uh, uh, poverty, uh, like 60 or 65 percent of the population is still below the poverty line, and this is a huge challenge because the population is growing. It is still fast going, around 3% per year. 
and uh, with a, a fertility rate of six children per, per woman, uh, these are bringing us a, a huge challenge. But uh, the country, thanks to those economic uh, results, the, the, the president uh, made a reality uh, free education for all at the primary level. It was, uh, it is in the law, but no one could achieve it so far. And uh, uh, the president made it a reality in 2019, started in 2019. And now we have over 5 million uh, children at the primary level who were, who were not at school or should not be at school, uh, but they are now uh, in the uh, school. And this gave, gave us another challenge to face the level of uh, children uh, at the primary level, to give them facility for school, plus classrooms, and uh, to improve, improve the, the, the quality of education. Uh, we are achieving that uh, thanks to our partners. And uh, what we can say is the most important challenge, uh, the most important result that we brought in those uh, two or three uh, last years was uh, the, the primary school for all. Um, for to make the economy and more resilient uh, and less dependent to the extractive industry, uh, now the objective is to provide a kind of diversification of the economy. Uh, and for that, we have targeted two ways. The first way is uh, within the, the, the mining sector, uh, provide more added value to our critical minerals. And on that, uh, we are uh, engaged in uh, local transformation of our, some of our critical minerals, which are part of the, the, the value chain to get some batteries, uh, batteries for EVs. And uh, we have the main, it has been assessed by, uh, by Bloomberg recently that uh, it was possible to, uh, it was three times more uh, uh, profitable to build a factory on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on batteries than doing it in the US or in China or in Poland. So it means that uh, we have a comparative advantage thanks to the minerals that we have. And uh, the objective now it is to start uh, building the chain uh, gradually to be, to have some uh, EVs, some um, battery uh, uh, produced locally. And uh, in addition to that, on the coltan, for example, you all of you you have coltans, you have coltans in your iPhone and and essentially coming from DRC. And uh, we are trying to bring uh, more transparency on that uh, supply chain because uh, in the, the the recent past everything was done through Rwanda. Uh, uh, through uh, it was linked to criminal activities, war, etc. And now we are going, we are about to build the first smelter of coltan in the country, which will be the biggest one in Africa and the second one in the world. Uh, to transform our coltan locally, not only coltan, but the treaties, so coltan, tantalium, and tungsten, something like that, and nobium also. So it means that we are in the process of changing completely the face of the country on the economic side, on the human rights side, on the social side. But of course, it takes time. It is a long-term process, but it is clear that uh, we are moving forward and. Uh, uh, this is a big change that we are bringing to the country. Uh, the other way of uh, to provide economic transformation and to reduce poverty is the agri-business, agri agricultural sectors. We have at least 80 million of hectare of arable land. We can bring it to 120. We had uh, land that we can irrigate. means that we have the one of the biggest potential in Africa to feed all Africa and even over. But unfortunately, for, for the time being, we use only less than 10% of those land and both we, uh, because of lack of infrastructure, roads, uh, railway, etc. So the challenge is huge. Uh, the country, like our country, which is bigger than 
the western the western europe uh, uh, in 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 size uh, the 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 most important challenge that we face is logistic uh, and because of that uh, it's not easy to 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 build a, 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 an efficient agricultural sector but uh, we are working on that and uh, the other challenge that we are facing is human capital we need to train our people and we are putting a lot of money in that but uh, we are well, uh, with only a budget the public budget which is only 16 billion us dollar for 100 people uh, it is uh, obviously it is very low and uh, the the challenge is still very high but uh, we are progressing we are moving forward and what i can say it is that the time uh, of the big change in brc is now happening and if we succeed on the local transformation of our, of our minerals the impact on the poverty reduction will be uh, uh, very effective because it is shown by all the studies that uh, uh, without in the uh, beginning industrial transformation in our country can be mining or agriculture it will be very difficult to reduce the number of poor we can reduce the poverty line the average uh, but very difficult to reduce the number of poor so uh, what we are trying to achieve now is clearly uh, very critical for the future of the country is to build an industry and to build the industry we need uh, energy we need roads and on energy we also have the highest potential in africa and maybe in the world only on uh, renewable energy like hydro in hydro we have a potential of over 100,000 uh, gigawatt uh, which is very important and uh, unfortunately because of uh, lack of governance in the past we are still the country a country average uh, access to energy uh, is below 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 which is not acceptable but it is common to africa in africa we have a lost uh, on we have on we, we are only over only on there 1.3 billion huh? in the continent we are around 1.3 billion the continent but 60 million of people in africa don't have access to energy and uh, 60 100 million and nine, no, 600 million of energy and 900 million don't have access to clean energy but uh, we can be a response to that I'm always saying that drc is a solution country uh, when it comes to energy and climate challenges for the world but the thing is that uh, we don't get for many reasons, good or bad reason, we don't get enough funding and support to build project, project and program to face those challenges. Uh, when we talk about the climate finance for, finance, for example, we represent 60% of the African forest, as I said, but we get only less than 5% of the climate finance that is directed to Africa. These are the kind of challenges. We are working closely with, with all our partners to find a way to bridge the gap, but uh, this is still an ongoing process and, uh, and uh, we hope that we'll be able to make it. We need to make it only because if we don't make it, considering the role of the forest, the DRC forest at the world level, if we don't make it, maybe we can miss it as a country but we will not be the only one affected by that because all the world will miss those forests because deforestation will continue. Well, since we don't have a sustainable development on agriculture, on access to energy, which is the case currently, the first impact, we are deforestating. Uh, we are killing the forest. And uh, the reason why, it's not only a matter of uh, uh, DRC itself, but it is a world matter. And at the time that we are talking about uh, uh, global, common, global uh, common uh, uh, public good, it is very important and interesting to consider 
the access to energy for country, for poor countries and for countries like DRC, which is uh, so important for us, like uh, something, a, a commitment given to the world. And we have to find solution to, to give power to people, clean power to people, so that we can save forests. This, uh, I will end uh, at this, uh, on this point for now. If you have some question, I will try to answer. Um, and as I told you, I will take some questions, but that maybe not all because of the time remaining. And I thank you very much for your time. I hope that you have been able to listen to me because first, English is not perfect. And second, I have a problem with my voice because I had a call. So I hope that you have been able to, to catch me. Thank you very much, uh, all of you. Thank you so much, Minister, for this wonderful presentation. I feel like you covered a lot with respect to your development plans for the country. But one question that often comes up when people mention the Democratic Republic of Congo is the issue of this cobalt rush, right? Um, as you mentioned, cobalt is, is, is major. And uh, for those who don't know, the cell phones and the electric cars and Teslas, they rely specifically on this mineral. And this has caused a boom in demand for cobalt around the world, from China, from the US, from everywhere. And at the same time, you said that 65% of the population is poor. So um, you've explained some of the strategies from a government perspective, but what do you think um, would be the dream from an industrialization perspective? You talked about building the industry, but do you think that, for instance, we could have electric cars that are made in Africa, made in Democratic Republic of Congo, for instance? This is something that I think about specifically when we speak to MIT students who are all engineers or all very, most of them are interested in engineering. Yes, yeah, certainly this is uh, possible. And I think we will, we will, we will reach that uh, level, but it is a process and uh, it will come gradually. What is important is to start. And now it is clear that for many reasons, for all the reasons that I mentioned, uh, the time is ours. Now we have, uh, uh, an unexpected opportunity, given the, uh, what is happening in the, uh, currently in the world, to build that uh, industry. And uh, as I told you, we are starting. Uh, to give you an example on Cobol, on Cobol we are currently building the most the, 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 the most important industry at the uh, to transform Cobol. It is not doing the whole transformation of Cobol, but uh, partial transformation to add some value to cobalt, to imported cobalt. It is adding up to 40% of the value of cobalt that we are exporting. So once we will, we will complete that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, plant, uh, we will be able to add value to the cobalt that we are exporting. And uh, this is the beginning of the change, the change that uh, I was talking about. There's one of our famous MIT professors who basically wrote a book called Why Nations Fail. It's that professor is Darren Asimoglu, and he wrote it with James Robinson. And he said that a lot of the reasons many countries fail, including countries in Africa, is because of a lack of institutions. And the fact that there's not many institutions that the population can rely on, it leads to poor governance. And that leads me to a question that came in the Q&A session. And the Q&A session has Aliko Songolo, who's asking, um, one of the problems perhaps in the DRC has been poor governance. And the, 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 the question continues, mineral wealth has been squandered, and now the country wants to get into recently discovered oil. How is extraction of oil going to be managed differently than the other minerals in the face of generally poor governance? That's a question uh, coming from the audience. What would be your answer, Minister, to that question? No, oh, you're absolutely right. Governance is the key. And uh, this, it is uh, indeed something that uh, we, we have been missing for a long time. But as I told you, we are making some progress. I gave you on EITI and others. I, cannot, I don't have time to go into the detail, but it's a long process. Improving governance is a long process. What is clear is that 
We are corruption. Uh, we are fighting uh, wrongdoing of the past, and uh, we are trying to 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 strengthen the the, the, the judiciary system uh, to reinforce the, the the rule of law in the country, uh, and uh, including uh, the human rights. So it's a long process. Uh, if I had I had some figure, I would I would I could have uh, uh, give you some figures, some example, but. It is uh, clear that uh, you can read from third parties the improvement that we made, and uh, and uh, uh, we are doing our best in that regard. On contracts, for example, we have been reviewing many of the mining contracts of the past, which were not fair. And currently, we have something that we are doing uh, with the Chinese, some Chinese investment. We are about to close a negotiation to review some of the, some of the key contracts. The, the biggest mine of copper and gold in country uh, is uh, is uh, uh, also among those uh, among those uh, contracts that we are reviewing. On forest, the same. We gave some concessions on forest, which uh, could be questioned. We have reviewed all the concessions on forest, and now it is clear that uh, some of them have been uh, cancelled, uh, which were not compliant with the law. So it means that we are really improving uh, our governance, but uh, it is clear that it is a long process. And also on money laundering, uh, anti-money laundering framework, we have set up, we we have we have now a new law, a new law, and we are under review of the. I don't know how you call it in English. FAFTA, how do you call it? Gafi. Gafi in French, but I think in English it's another acronym. Uh, so we are under the process of review to improve our uh, to improve that sector and to improve the quality of the work uh, we are doing to bring more transparency and more credibility to our system. So these are the kind of some of uh, some areas where we are uh, uh, building on uh, our governance. And again, on democracy, uh, democracy we went through chaotic uh, system in the past, but now we are preparing to go on election by the end of this year. And uh, it is clear that everything is on track now. We hope that we'll be able to make it as planned. So no delay in election, more transparency in election, in election to, to, to open a new page on that regard. Um, thank you, Minister. There's another question here from Lievan Senga, who's asking, with all investments in the mining and agriculture, agriculture sector that you mentioned, is investment in infrastructure, especially rail, a priority? Yes, clearly, clearly it's a priority. But as the, the our budget space uh, very narrow, we are managing to have a combination of uh, public investment and private one. That's why we have a law on PPPs to call for more PPPs uh, initiative and more private investment where it is possible to bridge the gap in terms of infrastructure. It is clear that we are in the lack of infrastructure. We went through a study made by IMF recently, and it shows that we are among the countries with the lowest, the lowest, uh, uh, the, uh, low, lowest level of uh, basic uh, infrastructure like school, uh, uh, roads, hospitals, school, etc. So we we need to catch up, and we have the uh, the possibility to catch up, given Wonderful. given the opportunities that the economy is giving. Because uh, in, yeah, despite the difficulties that we have, uh, but we still are we are among the most uh, the the economy that are giving the most uh, opportunity for investment. So that's why uh, improving uh, governance and the rule of law is so important for us to call for more, to bring more investors, public or private, in the country. That, which is what we are doing, doing currently. The, the, the final question from the Q&A before I turn it over to Khadija Ba, who's a student at MIT, is around the Rainforest Protection Pact the agreement between Brazil, Indonesia, and the DRC. And that was something that was mentioned in the news in November. And Kyle Marston is asking why we haven't heard much about it since November. 
No, I think it was just the first step. It was a meeting. It was not a meeting at the head of state level. Uh, a meeting at the head of state level is in preparation, and maybe you will hear more about that. Uh, but uh, uh, it will come, certainly. Great. Actually, let me sneak one more question in from Guillaume Ambla. He's asking, what are the countries investing the most in the DRC at the moment? And do, and do you consider your key partners? Which countries? I would imagine China, of course, but not, no, I'll, yes. I'll defer yes. to your... Currently, China has been... Uh, uh, in the mining sector, they are number one, that is clear. Uh, on... Uh, on, on private investment, if I can call that uh, those investment private, they are number one. But on uh, now we have new partners uh, coming, like the U UAE. They are coming very fast on gold and others. But we have also Kibali, which is uh, an affiliate of uh, Barrick. Barrick, they, are, they have the, the, the second biggest gold mine in the world is in DRC uh, with Barrick. And we have others also. But uh, uh, clearly, the Chinese are number one on the mining sector, especially on copper and cobalt. Uh, but they are, they are not the only one. On the public investment, on public investment, uh, we are mainly with our multilateral donors like World Bank and others. We have managed to multiply by four the portfolio of the World Bank uh, from between two, 2000, from 2019 to now, from, uh, yes, we have a portfolio with the World Bank of over 8, million, 8, 8 billion. It was less than 2 million uh, in 2018. So it means that uh, uh, and we are doing in all the directions. And in the meantime, we also, we are a very, uh, we are not, our debt ratio is very low. One of the lowest in the continent. Our debt ratio, it means that public debt uh, by GDP is uh, below 20%. Like when uh, most of the countries are above 70%, uh, 60 or 70%. So it means that we have a room, we have a space to take additional uh, debt but the problem is our capacity to deliver and to deliver effectively to bridge the gap in terms of uh, our needs. There's a question related to youth. And the, 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 the question really is starting with the fact that commitment to youth inclusion was absent in your presentation. And the question is, what are the measures that are in place to empower the youth to incorporate them in these industries and government? Yes, first, so, first of all, the, 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 main, the main important thing, I was talking about big, big, uh, big, big um, area of action, which have an impact on youth, like uh, economic transformation, etc. It will benefit, uh, they will benefit those, those changes. But uh, uh, below that, there are uh, many actions that have been taken, we have a, 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 guarantee, a, fund, a guarantee fund for youth and uh, youth uh, and entrepreneurship. We have a lot of uh, initiative, but uh, it is clear that uh, uh, those initiatives can be very effective if uh, uh, the, the, the big framework is, uh, uh, is um, supportive of that. That's why I, I focus mainly on those big uh, the big framework, but it is clear that we have several initiatives directed to the youth. There is a lot of uh, institutions that we have set up recently to support youth and uh, entrepreneurship, uh, and youth training, etc. I, I don't have all of them in, in my mind and in front of me, but uh, this can be a specific uh, presentation on that. Yeah, I can share some, some details with the MIT community because I, I, think, I actually I think came know, to the ERC. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the one I came for last July. So, yeah. uh, Skadija, sorry, I managed to sneak in two additional questions. Now you have the mic to ask your question. And please introduce yourself to the minister and to the audience first. 
Thank you. Thank you, Claude. Um, hi, Minister. My name is Hedi Jaba. I am from Senegal in a second year MBA at Sloan. Um, my question is quite related to um, this whole topic of just rainforest. How would the DRC go about valuing the rainforest in order to participate in carbon market? It's a topic that's very trendy and very current here at Sloan. And there's always this question as what factors do you consider to see how much you deserve from other countries? I um, would love to get your perspective on that. No, very good question, and uh, you are right. It is very important to to develop that uh, carbon market, and we are trying to work on that uh, regard. Uh, currently, we are about to close a deal, not the first one, but maybe the most important one on uh, on uh, carbon credits. Uh, but the, the the main problem that we have, that I have personally, is that the the, the price that they are giving us, I it seems to be very low when it is uh, about Africa. Uh, and uh, we, for example, now we have, we, we, are about, we, we have closed a deal on at $15 per ton, which seems low for me, but uh, uh, people are saying that uh, this, uh, this, uh, the, this, this price is quite uh, good uh, compared to some others in Africa. Uh, if we had, we were at the, at the, Western level, like $50 per ton or $100, $120 per ton, we have billions, uh, close to 20 billion uh, yearly. But unfortunately, we are still at a low level, uh, $15, and we have closed first the, the, the deal that I mentioned. And uh, we think that we'll be able to better manage our forest to show very clearly the impact of, on the uh, on the on carbon and etc and to to get better price but this will come um, gradually thank you so much uh thank you uh, um this has just been so fascinating we do have a final question which is what are your three books that you would recommend to this audience um, this MIT audience, but then the other kind of global audience that is uh, uh, listening no, I, to us from I, different I would, parts of the world. No, I would, yes, I would recommend you only one that I have in mind. Maybe others I will send you later. But uh, I, I recommend you for those who are interested in Congo, uh, please read a book which is, uh, uh, the, the title is Le Congo, Une Histoire. I don't know if the, the, the English version is available. Uh, but let me check. But uh, please, uh, if you, you are good readers, please uh, read it. You will not regret. You will be very, uh, you will enjoy it. It's a, a story that everyone who like Africa, who like the world should read. Uh, I will give you on uh, this chat the, the details and the edition so that you can find it. Wonderful. I will make sure I share that with everybody who came in and all the people who are able to participate asynchronously. I want to thank you again, Nicolas Casadi, His Excellency, the Minister of Finance at the Democratic Republic of Congo. It was a pleasure to have you with us. And I want to invite everybody who came today to next week's webinar on April 27th. And we will be with Busi Siwe Siabe, who is one of the social activists in South Africa. She is one of the leaders of the Fees Must Fall movement. So thanks again to Nicola Cassidy. Thank thanks to thank all the you. participants. Like to and the final word, I would like to tell you that if there is anyone interested to have some uh, analytic research, research on DRC or on any topic that uh, can be interested for us, uh, we can manage to arrange that and so that uh, we continue to communicate on, uh, on useful uh, topics. Wonderful. Thank you all. Have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on what you are. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.